Hey, Pastor Ray Barnett here. Glad that you could be with me here on the Oasis. As always, I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. As you can see, slightly above my head here is an umbrella. And um, it occurred to me, probably should make the video first before I did anything else but I waited a little bit too long trying to get that umbrella out of your way <clears throat> you know have you ever realized I don't know if you've ever taken the time to think about it but some of these old expressions you know they really have a lot of meaning they were certainly coined for good reason for example uh, the more haste the less speed and there's so many many like that and this one here I thought it would be appropriate to coin the phrase into each life a little rain must fall as I said I waited a little too long it was just kind of uh, barely a drizzle and now well it's not coming down super hard but it's coming down hard enough that I have to have this umbrella over the top of my head yeah into each life a little rain must fall you know if you expect disappointments in your life in other words they're, they're going to happen then you won't be disappointed because they're going to happen and um, you know it's uh, just Again, these, these old sayings, they, they really have a lot of meaning. Into each life, a little rain must fall. And that's exactly what we have here today. A little bit of rain. But enough that if I didn't cover the camera or myself, I'd be soaked by the time I finish this broadcast. So I've got a little bit of a balancing act here. I'm holding the, uh, the umbrella over my head with one hand and trying to... Uh, give you something that will be helpful to you today into each life a little rain must fall as I just said if you learn to expect that life is going to have disappointments then you won't be disappointed the reason being is that they happen I think sometimes we have a habit in life of just picturing either how we want life to go or how we think life should go or how we wish it would go but that's not life frustrations disappointments are all part of life and they're not just part of your life they're part of everybody's life so if you learn to expect on any given day maybe on successive days. I know many of you are going through some difficult times right now and you're disappointed, frustrated and some other things. But if you learn to expect that again on any given day there's going to be disappointments and frustrations and obviously I know I, I get them occasionally where there's not a frustration or a disappointment something that's um, bugging me or making me angry make me feel angry um, if I don't expect that if you don't expect that you're going to be frustrated a lot you're going to be disappointed a lot because you don't think that's how life should be now knowing that this audience uh, is comprised of adults primarily adult primarily adults um, by now you should understand life is going to have disappointments and life is going to have frustrations and to repeat myself one more time if you know that and you expect that that whatever you got planned for today tomorrow whatever um, that something might come in to interrupt your plan and disappoint you frustrate you well then your frustration is going to be much um, worse and your disappointments are also going to feel 
much worse than they actually are. You know, we live, uh, I shared this a few broadcasts ago, we live in a world that has fallen. You know, in the eighth chapter of Romans, it even tells us that the creation itself is awaiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, sons, daughters, those that have, have uh, accepted Christ and know uh, that Christ is coming, Christ is going to return. But until that time comes, <laughs> at least in my opinion, the journey is going to be a bit rough. I think I said to you the, the yesterday, I, I don't really um, understand how, you know, some people write these, uh, <laughs> these sayings, you know. Hey, it's all about the journey. Well, speaking for myself, this journey's been a bit rough. How about you? I mean, the reason that you're subscribed to this channel and the reason that you're uh, watching me, at least from time to time, is because of that very thing. There's lots of frustrations, lots of disappointments. And if your disappointments are exceptionally severe, then you're going to have depression and anxiety. Well, I'm no different than you. I uh, come out, uh, you know, I go out day by day just like you, and I forget. Not everything is going to go the way I planned it. So you have contingency plans. This umbrella I keep in the trunk of my car uh, just for an occasion uh, like this one here. But you know what I really wanted to, by the way, this is preparation. Let me show you my umbrella again. There it is. That's preparation for that time when I leave the house and it's sunny. And by the time I get to do this broadcast, it's not so sunny. It's, it's raining <laughs> or, or worse. But what I really wanted to talk to you about today is uh, the difference between loneliness and solitude. All of my life, from the time I was very, at the very least uh, in my teens, I always found solitude to be something that really settled me and calmed me down. Now, some of you know, you know me personally, you've known me for a long time, perhaps, and uh, you will recall that I lived I'm from Yonkers, New York. It's the fourth largest city in the state. And um, I lived in South Yonkers, which has uh, always been a, a rough area, some rough neighborhoods. Still is. But my front door, uh, the uh, last apartment building that we lived in, my front door, the address was Yonkers. Walk through the lobby, go out the back door. What's this here? Yeah. Uh, um, it was uh, the Bronx, but not just the Bronx, the way maybe you uh, picture it if you're not from New York, with buildings and uh, traffic and all that. The back door to my apartment, to our apartment growing up, was Van Cortlandt Park. And if you don't know anything about Van Cortlandt Park, then you wouldn't know that the Van Cortlandt Park, which is in the Bronx, is the second largest natural preserve in the state. The only um, park that is larger, much, much larger, than Van Cortlandt Park is right here in the foothills of the Adirondacks. Beyond that, in New York, um, Van Cortlandt Park is the second largest small game uh, park in the state of New York. When I first moved up here, people would explain to me, oh, Pastor, that's a woodpecker. And I was... I was awakened by woodpeckers many, many days living in that apartment there on Carroll Avenue in Yonkers. Um, rabbits, pheasant, horses. A stable down there, I assume it's still there. And you'd see, you know, either mounted police or just people out, you know, uh, who've rented a horse for the day and many bridle paths. And that's where I used to run and do my exercising and training when I was young as an amateur fighter. 
And um, there were other times, many, many times, when I would just simply go into the woods there in the Bronx, hard to believe if you're not from that area, you won't know, and just walk and find solitude. Solitude for me has always been a place to um, calm myself, being in God's nature, and then um, also, well, just the the natural, what would be the right word? I don't want to say ambiance, but uh, natural environment to think things through. What's going on? This has been my habit all of my life. Find some solitude, think things through, and most times, if not all, I always found some solution, some bright spot, some answers to what was troubling me. Now again, this has been my habit for all of my adult life. But I want to share with you that there's a difference between solitude and loneliness. I have been very blessed, I really have been, to have made many, many friends over the years. Quite a lot. Thousands. Thousands. And Here's the thing, and I know that many of you will be able to relate uh, to this. Sometimes you could be with a dozen people, more. You could be walking on the streets of the Bronx or Manhattan, and um, no matter how many people you're with, even close friends and sometimes family, feel very lonely. So I want to share with you the difference between solitude that's something that you choose. And loneliness, when any number of things can happen when, you, when you're lonely. Well, first of all, you can actually be alone and, and just, it's not solitude. You didn't choose it. It just happened that way. Many reasons that it happened that way. And you, well, you, you just feel isolated. And you, and you may not be. You may not be someplace where it's just all isolation but rather um, just the sense that you feel that you're alone. This is different than choosing to be alone. <laughs> My wife has said to me on, on an occasion that I, I should have been a monk. Well, I don't know about that. Um, I have been in monasteries. I have been on the so-called retreats. Uh, over the years, but um, solitude is different. It's something that you choose. choose. You choose to be alone to do, as I just mentioned, just to think, to hear the birds, and uh, to look at God's nature and just reflect and to think. For me, this is a good practice. I think it's something that we here in America need to get back to. And if it's not your habit, you should try it. You say, what, Pastor, I'm, I'm lonely. I'm, I'm very lonely. I don't want any more loneliness. But I'm trying to share with you that there's a difference between loneliness and solitude. Again, I have been very fortunate. I mean, almost anywhere I go, I've been in this city here, Amsterdam, New York, 35 years. Born and raised in Yonkers, 33 years. And I know the difference between being in massive crowds and... Um, you know, being in a place where it's not so overpopulated. Loneliness is something that you want to avoid. Loneliness is something that you want to break away from. Solitude, though, is something that you should um, embrace. Even if you're, you are alone right now for any reason, you know, you don't have a lot of friends, family may be gone, moved away, uh, passed away if you're older. And it's not a good feeling. It's not, it's not a pleasant feeling. Solitude, on the other hand, taking the walk. Me, I just, I, I get enough exercise in the gym. I don't feel like walking when I'm, when I'm all done. Matter of fact, it feels good to sit. Um, but solitude, again, is something that you should choose so you can just think things through and, and calm yourself and soothe yourself. 
You may be asking, well, what, what do I do about the loneliness? Well, there is a verse in the Bible that says if a man wants to have friends, obviously it's man or woman. You have to show yourself friendly. I have a habit of just walking up to people um, and just, you know, introducing myself. My name is Ray or Pastor Ray, depending on the circumstance. And I just make friends. I don't wait till they come to me. Just I stick out my hand and uh, introduce myself. And I'm in, I, I told you this the other day, I'm in a new uh, gym now where I knew some people from the past that are there, but the ones I don't know, I just say, yeah, I see you all the time here. And uh, what is your name? And then I memorize it. Sometimes people will come to me and they'll say, you remembered my name. I hadn't seen him in years because I make it a purpose to memorize it. So what's the biblical principle? I have friends. <laughs> At least I assume I have friends that I have made because I've shown myself to be wanting friends, to make friends. I don't wait again for them to come to me and say, hey, how'd you like to be friends? I just give them a courtesy and again, introduce myself, stick out my hand. Oddly enough, in my case at least, uh, I could be in a city where I know I don't know anybody, and before you know it, <laughs> I'll know the story of this. I'm thinking of somebody once I did meet in a gym, in Gold's Gym, Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. I knew all about his divorce. I knew all about his uh, some of his problems. I don't know if that's just me, my personality. I, I'm not sure, um, but I do know this: if you want to have friends. And you got to show yourself to be friendly. A smile is not going to hurt. You say, well, I don't feel like smiling. Well, then you don't do it for, for yourself. You do it for the person that's looking at you. This is probably the premier way to deal with your loneliness. You say, well, I'm shut up and I, I don't have access to, you know, people. Well, some of you do. Some of you are in locations where you don't have access to too many people. Well, the social media now is helping us out with that. I'm in touch with friends I haven't seen, some of them in 40 years, 50 years, but once we make contact, you know, give them a phone call, this type of thing, and then you have friends. So that's just a little bit of wisdom to deal with your loneliness. Go out and make friends and show yourself to be friendly. Introduce yourself. Don't work out with the first, try the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. It's been my habit. But on the other, and to leave you with this, solitude is something that I truly believe that you should seek out. Go, go to your place where it's, well, they, they, people call it their happy place. Um, yeah, there's places where I go that do, does make me happy. But the solitude is, is, is good for your soul. It's good for you just to sit and think and get perspective or reevaluate or just to think things through and come up with some solutions god god willing and you, know, you pray god give me wisdom god help me and uh the bible promises us that if we would ask we would receive that's what jesus said apostle james said well you have not because you ask not so practice um making a, a real effort to find some solitude. And I, when I, for me at least, solitude means I'm not with any friends. I'm by myself, but I'm by myself by a choice. I choose to be alone so I can think and meditate, reflect, calm down, whatever. I also choose to make friends by doing what I just told you. Taking an interest in their life. By the way, you know, this is a, a real important thing for those of you, and that's why you're watching this channel that have anxieties and stuff, you'll never know how many people are suffering with so many different needs similar to yours or identical to yours or worse than yours. And then there's always the aspect of just having a laugh, um, lighting, uh, making the mood a bit lighter. And um, these two things, I want you to know the difference between loneliness and solitude. My advice is seek solitude and seek friends. But you're going to have to take the initiative, especially if you're shy, to um, go up 
and make the friends. You know, you wouldn't know it, but when I was a kid, I was very, very shy. And, um, you know, would hide my face in my mother's skirt or whatever. Some of my grandkids do that. Um, and I just, I don't know, I always took an interest in people. I could take an interest in you, sitting out in here in the rain. Determined I was going to make this video no matter what. All right, so it's 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 um, a very short uh, little exhortation here. Seek solitude, seek to make friends, and your life will be in balance. And as I said in the introduction, expect disappointments, expect frustrations. This is, by the way, where the solitude helps because you can deal with them better when you're just alone and thinking things through. Most times, at least for me, most times the picture gets a little bit brighter because I'm getting some, some balance and some perspective. Into each life, a little rain is going to fall. So if you expect frustration and you expect disappointments, challenges, obstacles, then you won't be disappointed because you were anticipating them. You knew they were going to happen. Then you have the, the, uh, the phrase to improvise in your situation and then to adapt to that improvisation and then overcome. That's my little exhortation for you here today as I sit under this umbrella. And my hope, and my hope is that it's, uh, these, things are, these talks are, are helping you. So let me pray for you today. Father, I pray for my friends out there who are feeling lonely. Help them to take the initiative to show themselves friendly and make friends. But also help them to seek out solitude where they can just think, relax, and enjoy being alone before they have to go back to the business, responsibilities, and their work, whatever that may be. Touch my friends today, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, God willing, the rest of the week is supposed to get sunnier, a little rain tomorrow, I guess, is the weather report for here in upstate New York. But also, uh, by the weekend, it's going to be up to or about 90 degrees, so things are going to change. And uh, when Christ returns, they will really, really change. If you like uh, being with this small group, and I always mention it's a small group, we have just, <clears throat> excuse me, a little shy of 300 subscribers. Um then subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification button so you know when these videos go up. Give me a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. Keep us on the YouTube radar. And as always, I just pray, I truly do, uh, for you that you'll have the peace of God in your life. All right. God willing, Lord willing, I'll be with you here again tomorrow on the Oasis. And until then, may the peace of Christ be with you. God bless. See you tomorrow.